you understand? They were testing us! Can the true reason we so fear the unknown be that we know ourselves too well? Next week, the computer which can look straight into your brain and find out exactly what you're thinking. That's next Sunday at 9.30 on BBC Two. Diamond, the godfather of black comedy. You know, I have heard of maximum force. And I always have time for the blue force. And my wife, she told me about G-force. But I don't know nothing about no program called the A-force. Apparently, it's 90 minutes of fun. Comedy. The A Force. The A Force. And the damn fool then want me to present it. Well, it better be good, otherwise I'm off. You mark my word. The A Force. Friday, 11:15 on BBC Two. Tonight on BBC Two, a first showing on British television for Scarface. Strong language as Al Pacino begins the violent and bloody pursuit of the American dream. First, by way of an introduction, a new look for a new series of Movie Drome. Welcome back to Movie Drome. For seven years, Alex Cox introduced the sort of movies you couldn't get out of your brain. Films that were excessive, sexual, political or daring in some other way. Then he went away to make more of his own movies. And after I ran the Edinburgh Film Festival, the BBC asked me to take over. I have to tell you that this is my dream job. Like Alex, I love the sort of picture that wants to tell me how extreme life is. I want to feel the passion and the personality of the people behind the camera. So here are a bunch of movies to spice up your lives. As the weeks go by, we'll be showing plenty of sci-fi films. There'll be gangster pictures. <laughs> Movies about sexuality, fear of technology, of death. <laughs> Melodramas, farces, and deadpan comedies from all over the place. <laughs> Actors like Al Pacino, Julie Christie, Gene Hackman, and Alain Delon are coming up. So are directors like Francois Truffaut, Billy Wilder, Mathieu Kasovitz, Paul Schrader, Adam McGowan, David Cronenberg, Martin Scorsese, and Orson Welles. In Movie Drone, the modern world is wonderful and scary as hell. There's no going back into a cozy past. The future is completely unknown, and movies speak the raw and brilliant language of reality. Join me each week.
first extreme film we have for you is Scarface. This is a network premiere of the film and it's completely uncut. Before the 1980s had properly started, Oliver Stone, who made JFK and Platoon, wrote a screenplay about a Cuban thug who goes to Florida and makes it big dealing in cocaine. The story was an update of the 30s gangster classic of the same name. The theme this time was modern gangsterism, greed is good, the deregulated Reaganite America where anything goes. Director Brian De Palma took this liberal script and stretched it paper thin. When I first saw the movie, I thought the marriage of De Palma and Stone, the moralist and the amoralist, was made in hell. De Palma seemed too into the super skinny girls like Michelle Pfeiffer or the orchestrated violence like the chainsaw carve up to get to grips with Stone's political critique. Why the hell did he hire the worst composer in the world, Giorgio Moroder, to do the tinny synthesized music? Why not Coppola's grand, rich opera? Then I saw the fantastic shot in the middle of this picture, which starts on a giant balloon in the sky emblazoned with the words, the world is yours, and cranes down to the fakest coastline you've ever seen, with Al Pacino poncing in the middle of it. Then I noticed how often Pacino is slumped at the bottom of the screen, how small De Palma makes him, how he is increasingly dwarfed by the huge tacky sets and kitschy world he builds himself. The things I hated about this picture, the soullessness of Florida, the greed of the characters, De Palma's empty scenes and style, became the things which made it brilliant. This film strips the reality out of shots. It makes everything look fake and cheap. Expertly so, because the guy who shot the picture, John Alonzo, also did Chinatown and Close Encounters and Internal Affairs. When I watch Scarface now, I'm really moved by the way it subjects its immigrant spick, no hope or grease ball to everything the wee macho runt deserves. At the end of the film, the camera cranes through a monstrous palazzo that Pacino built with his cocaine money. There's neon and wide boy riches everywhere. Bullets spray the place like Rambo, directed by Visconti. For me, it's one of the greatest but hardest to watch moments in all of 80s cinema. The world is yours.
call yourself? Eh? Como se llama? Antonio Montana. And you? What you call yourself? Where'd you learn to speak the English, Tony? <laughs>